Can I have your attention, please? We'll be starting up shortly. <clears throat> Good evening, and welcome to the Lowell Planning Board for Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. The first matter on the agenda this evening would be the approval of the minutes for the September 9th, 2021 meeting. What's the request for the board for uh, approval of the minutes? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. I'll second that motion. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 So matters have been approved. Uh, we do have a request for uh, several continuances this aye. evening. Sorry. Starting off with the first matter, which will be a site plan review and a special permit for 545 Broadway Street. Ernest Durante has applied to the planning board on behalf of Alfonso Molomalo for a site plan review and special permit approval on the above address. The applicant is seeking to convert an existing warehouse into 12 unit residential building. The property is in the urban mixed use zoning district. The proposal requires special permit and site plan review approval from the planning board to create more than three dwelling uni units. Variances are requested for approval by the zoning board for relief from dimensional and off street parking requirements and any other relief requested by the Lowell zoning ordinance. The applicant has requested that this matter be continued to our October 18th, 2021 meeting. What's the request of the board for the continuance? Chairman, sure, I'll make a motion to continue the um, hearing to uh, the October 18th, 2021 meeting. Okay, so we have a motion to, to continue as requested by the applicant. Second, Mr. Chairman. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes yes. Any opposition? Hearing none, that motion is approved. The second matter is under new business for site plan review and special permit. It is 116 and 128 Fletcher Street. James Zorbis and Jeffrey Crowley have applied to the planning board for a special permit and site plan review approval to redevelop the existing structure into 11 residential units at the above address. The property is located in the UM U zoning district and requires special permit approval pursuant to section 12.1 E for the proposed use and site plan review pursuant to section 11.4 to create more than three dwelling units. The applicant has requested the matter be continued to October 4th in the planning board meeting. I believe there was an issue with some other um, notices so therefore the applicant requested the continuance till October 4th. What's the request of the board for the continuance? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to uh, continue to the October 4th planning board meeting. Okay. I'll second the motion. We have a second by Mr. Lockhart. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes yes. Any opposition? Hearing none, that matters continue to October 4th. <clears throat> um, the next matter on the agenda is a site plan review and special permit. 44 Rock Street. James Zorbis has applied to the planning board for a special permit and site plan review approval to redevelop the existing lot into 11 spaces, approximately 5,400 square feet parking area at the above address. The property is located in the UMF zoning district and requires special permit approval but pursuant to section 12-6H for the proposed use and site plan review pursuant to section 11.4 to construct a parking lot, excuse me, parking area greater than 4,000 square feet. This application runs, can, runs I, guess it, I should say it's attached with 116, 128 Fletcher Street, so they're looking to use the parking on Rock Street to, to uh, help with the parking on the Fletcher Street on the above matter that we just continued. Uh, so the applicant has requested that that matter be continued to October 4th so the matters could be heard together again because of uh, an issue with the notice. So at this time that applicant is requesting this matter be continued so both matters could be heard at the same night together on October 4th. What's the request of the board? 
I move approval. Okay, motion by Mr. Malovich to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lockhart. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes yes. Any opposition? Hearing none, that matter is continued. Next matter on the agenda is a site plan review and a special permit for 43 Fletcher Street. Christopher Natali has applied to the planning board for site plan review and special permit approval to construct a mixed use building consisting of 20 dwelling units in approximate 3,442 square foot commercial space on the first floor. The property is in the urban neighborhood mixed use zoning district and requires site plan review under section 11.4.2 and special permit approval under section 12.1 E for the proposed use and under 6.165 to reduce residential and non-residential parking requirements by 50%. This is not being requested for continuance. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> so, we do have a matter to go forward. May we hear from the applicant, please. Mr. Chairman, before we begin uh, testimony, just for the record, I will be recusing myself on this matter. Okay. Chairman, for the record, I'll be recusing myself as well. Okay. So we have two people that, that who will be accusing themselves, and we have one matter, I mean one, excuse me, board member absent. So we will have four um, board members um, will be hearing the matter this evening. Council, as you know, um, the planning board always gives the benefit of the doubt to the applicant if they want to proceed with four board members present due to the fact that you need four for the special permit. Or if you did want to continue the matter, we always give you the option to do so. But, uh, th thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have made the decision to go forward and open the public hearing okay. to, present the, to present the project to the board. Okay. Uh, we thought that would be in the best interest of my client to move this forward. Um, uh, Attorney George Theodore, 133 Market Street, representing the applicant, Christopher Natali, uh, who is here with me tonight. Also will be uh, Matt Hammer of uh, Landplex, who is the engineer, and uh, Barry Gannick is the, the architect. Uh, he should be coming tonight, and you have his plans that were submitted to you. Uh, as you correctly stated, uh, this is uh, an application for site plan review approval. Uh, it comprises uh, the development uh, or the redevelopment, uh, 20 residential units, uh, as well as two commercial units on the first floor. Uh, we are going to redevelop what was the old Furies Bar, which has a rich history in the city both as a, as a bar, but also you have the historical inventory of it that it would go back to 1868 that there was a building on that, that lot. And, uh, but the, the building is of no use at all. And uh, we made the decision with conferences that we had in the past with the historic uh, chairman uh, to redevelop the property, demolish the building. Um, this also, will have to undergo a uh, review with the historic board, uh, design review with them, so any approvals tonight would be subject to their design approval of the project. We also applied for variances with the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for parking, uh, open space, uh, and uh, FAR, and for uh, land area per dwelling unit. The property has been, uh, at one time historically during my lifetime, operated as a bar. Uh, my client purchased it in 2015. It was not in operation then, and it was not in operation when the prior owner purchased it in 2013. The property also has a distinction of being located in the Acre Urban Redevelopment District. Uh, my review of the plan, I didn't see anything specifically earmarked for this property here, but part of what was undergoing with the Acre redevelopment plan was for either the city with money earmarked from the state 
uh, to go ahead and redevelop properties, uh, provide some vibrant business opportunities in residential housing. In this instance here, it is appropriate to point out that that will be done by a private citizen. who will be using his own funds to redevelop this property and to build a 20-unit apartment building on this site. It is an aggressive project for 20 units and six stories. However, the economics would warrant that. Um, a smaller development on this site, the economics would not compensate them or the individual, my client down the line, who is someone who's gonna build these apartments and hold them. There'll be 20 single unit, uh, single unit apartments of approximately 800 square feet each, which are good size units and comfortable units. He's, he's targeting a certain, a certain uh, age group there to occupy these units. Um, principally important in this project here is also the improvements that are going to be going through with the lower overpass. Those improvements are going to be made Will there'll be an additional crosswalk just further up from where this project sits right now, which will aid in pedestrian traffic. It'll also aid in the vehicular traffic in that, as we are proposing, we're proposing to have our parking in the Hamilton, redevelop uh, Hamilton uh, Canal District uh, parking garage. And we have letters from the parking director in which they've authorized us to obtain up to 40 parking spaces for the residential parking and nine spaces for the commercial units. The first floor of this project will have two commercial units uh, of approximately, it'll comprise approximately 3,400 square feet. The other major important element of this project here, where it'll be part of a catalyst of the redevelopment of this area, is what's happening exactly across the street of the McKittrix. That is being redeveloped. It'll be redeveloped where we understand that there will be a, uh, a low five bank there as well as office space. So what you have is something that is complementary to one another, which is an exciting proposal when you see how development can work. There's not an office building across from an office building. There's a residential apartment complex across from an office building. We, we believe that that complements the area for redevelopment and stimulates the economic growth in the development. Uh, all that ties into what the criteria that we need to have for a special permit. We know that part of the, the criteria of a special permit is the social, economic, and community needs served by this proposal. Well, adding uh, quality housing stock to the city is a community need. Adding this property uh, and providing it with uh, putting it on the tax base as a very, very, uh, um, uh, to create uh, revenue for the city is a community need. Uh, with respect to the traffic flow and safety, we believe that the improvements that are going to be made with the uh, Lord Overpass, as well as the pedestrian improvements that will be made for the sidewalks and crossings, will improve the area itself and allow for residents to be able to easily walk to the Hamilton Canal Garage, which we've timed it today, is a pro it's less than a 10 minute walk. It's, it's less than five minutes from the uh, entrance of this apartment building on, on Fletcher Street to go up and take a left onto Dutton Street to the corner of Broadway and, uh, uh, and Dutton Street and cross at the crosswalk there walk across the street to the parking garage. What this will also do is it will open up for the residents here to the amenities that will be provided at the um, Hamilton Canal District and that complete redevelopment, which is all something that will be very exciting down the road with the city. Uh, we all know that, that quality development is a long-term game. It's something that we look forward to the future. Uh, in stages over a period of years. And that's part of like 
what happens with this acre redevelopment plan. It's like a chess game where various pieces get moved in and get redeveloped over time. That plan was enacted in uh, 1999. Uh, so we believe that in filling this project here in a not going ahead and recreating something that would look old is not the philosophy behind the historic commission and how they go ahead and redevelop matters. From my experience in, in dealing with, uh, with the historic commission, it is always infilling these, these projects is, and Mr. Mr. Gannick, Barry Gannick is here, he'll, he'll discuss that further, is something where we fill it in with a modern concept. So we're not doing something to recreate something old, but to create something new. And that's what we're, we're doing here. And we believe that that is going to, when you drive down the street there and you see some of the older structures and the newer structures together, that adds some, some vibrancy to the, to the neighborhood, it adds some character to the neighborhood, and it adds a uniqueness to the, to the neighborhood. Uh, and we believe that all of this will have nothing but a positive physical impact on the city. One of the challenges of this is parking. We have no parking. Uh, it is there on Fletcher Street on the corner. Worthen Street is extended right there, which is on the other corner. There is a laundromat on the first floor across the street on Worthen, Worthen Street and a four-unit apartment building. There is the four uni, uh, a four-story apartment building. McKittrick's is across the street on Fletcher Street, which is another four stories. Um, our parking will have to, in order for this project to be successful and in order for it to pass here with the board here tonight, our parking has to come from the off-street park public parking garage, which the city has made provisions in, in, the, in the ordinance. And one provision, if we were able to have the leases in front of you and present to you leases from the city right now, under section 6.615, if we had all the leases for these 49 spaces right now that were satisfied under this provision, we would have the parking as a matter of right. I can't stand before you and say I have those leases. What I do have is I have a letter from the uh, parking director which indicates that we have 40 parking spaces which are gonna be made available to us uh, via a monthly parking pass, as well as nine parking spaces for the commercial uh, portion of this project. What I am asking is for a special permit under the another provision here, 6.61, paragraph 6, is for the board to reduce the parking requirements by 50% under that provision. And we will be asking the Board of Appeals for a variance from the parking requirements. Uh, as I said before, it's an, less than a 10 minute walk, it's probably like a six or seven minute walk from this property to the Hamilton Can Innovative Canal parking garage. Uh, it's urban living, it's city living, and this is not something that is unique to a development of this, of this type of development in the inner city. What we will also ask for and petition and go to the city council is we think it's important to have an amenity for this project is to have a specific loading area, maybe on Worthen Street, on the side street next to the building, a loading area for residents to be able to come park their cars there for a short period of time to load and unload their groceries. Uh, we think that that would be an important amenity. With respect to uh, the garbage pickup, what we would want to do with that, which is one of the questions that we had from uh, uh, staff, we will have in the lobby of the building on the first floor a, a lobby for the residents where we will have a trash collection room that we'll have for specifically for the trash and another one specifically for the recycling. And we will have private trash collection pickup. 
we think that's the best way to service this. And also in this lobby area in the interior of the building, it's probably appropriate for the Furies is to have a, a bike rack, but it's for bicycles. Uh, and we will have a bike rack in the interior lobby area as well. Um, I wanted to point out that you do have the, the graphic, the aerial that shows that from the entrance of the building to the Hamilton Canal garage, it's 1,275 feet. You also have, which was requested from staff, is to have a shadow study. That we also provided a shadow study and Mr. Gannick will be here to discuss that as well. Uh, we think that uh, it's a creative project. We think it's a bold project. And uh, again, we think that the scope and scale of the project is appropriate as far as the economics are concerned to be able to satisfy that component of this development. Right now, what I'd like to do is to have Matt go through some of the elements on the site, and we can uh, go through some of those, uh, and then we'll finish it off with, with uh, Mr. Gannick to go over the, uh, the building itself and also go through some of the, the elements of, of the height elements in particular of this project and how it's not necessarily going to overwhelm the other buildings because you'll see the, have the construction of each of the floors and the, the size and height of the floors is a little bit different. Uh, so it's not going to be as tall as one would think. Um, so Matt, you want to go ahead? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Council. I have uh, multiple copies of all the plans that I'm going to present uh, tonight, and I don't know if the board has all these plans uh, with their packets. And if not, I do have copies for everyone. I know we do have um, several pictures in the, in the packet, so if you want to start with what you have, and if we don't, then we can maybe ask for the handout. Yep, I have. Okay, I have. Thank you. Copies of everything. Yeah. If anybody needs one, just let us know as he proceeds and we'll get them to the board members. Okay. Great. So this is the site plan. Um, here's Fletcher Street here, Thorndike. There's a, a small landscaped uh, area out front where there's a little park, which is here. This is Worthen Street. There's a Hayden Street in the rear that has a, an odd configuration of a, a guardrail here. And then there's also this street here, which is access through Hayden Street. And it's blocked off with the sidewalk that comes around from Thorndike up Fletcher. This provides uh, access to the canal walkway uh, from this location down here. Existing uh, is the- Matt, can I interrupt you for one second? Um, I just want, want to point out that there's a property that's adjacent that Matt will point out that is owned by the city. Uh, it's surplus property, and we've been in negotiations when we first started this in 2017. That's how far back this project goes. Uh, when Joe Jenowitz was the uh, Ur Urban Project Renewal Manager, and that property is surplus property, and they wanted to go through the, the phase of the, uh, the engineering for the Lord, Lord overpass to have that go through before they could offer that property to us. Uh, so that's something down the road that we're looking to acquire from the city. Thank you, Attorney Theodoro. That parcel uh, that Mr. Theodoro is referencing is this parcel here. Right now that parcel has existing parking spaces in it and is ac access, like I was saying earlier, through Hayden Street and around. And then this is a, uh, an entire paved area between that parking area and the uh, park. And that's a city of Lowell-owned parcel. The proposed building is located here in bold. Um, it's also 
Um, it's also shown on this plan here in orange. <clears throat> it's a little more clear. And what happens here is this bold line here outlines the building itself, which will be right up against the uh, property lines to Worthen Street and Fletcher Street. And then there's going to be a three foot overhang, which is, a, is shown as a dashed line here and here. There'll be two small walkways on this end of the building that will come out of our stairway, which are located here and here that bring you down off the side. So, excuse me, Matt, if I may. So I know on planning staff, it talked about the three foot overhang, one of their comments. Okay. So is that something that you need relief from, from the council, or is that something that you've addressed already? No, that's, uh, that'll be a relief we'll need from the okay. city on that. Yeah, I noticed that was one of the city staff comments. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So that's the three foot overhang you're talking about. That's that's correct. Okay, thank you, sir. You'll be able to walk underneath it. It's just. Thank above you. your head it's it'll be over it'll be an overhang right. and thank you and on this rendering here that's this projection here in here okay existing around the property is uh, sidewalks here and there's a crosswalk here with a sidewalk connecting to bring you further up Fletcher Street. Um, as Attorney Theodore said, we're in a UMU district. Uh, the parcel has 3,442 square feet of area. And this will be a proposed six story building, uh, five stories being apartment complexes with four in each story, giving us a total of 20 units. And then the book ground floor will be uh, retail office space. This plan here, I believe all the members have seen as part of the submission shows the, um, the project site and its location to um, the project site showing its location to the Hamilton garage, uh, which um, this is where it's located here. I also wanted to note, I know that um, The board does not have this plan, but this is an actual plan that's going to be for the redevelopment of the intersection. So we're here. This is the park here, and they're going to reconfigure this whole intersection as part of the uh, Hamilton Canal and the Lord Overpass improvements over the next few years. That just gives you an idea how this will all be reconfigured in the future which will be an adjacency to our site. I can walk through the architectural drawings or, uh, you know, so this is the ground floor of the uh, office uh, retail. There'll be a, a, this an, a tenant here, which will occupy 10,090, 1,090 square feet. And the other tenant will be occupying uh, 1,346 square feet of space on the ground level here. This is the stairway that brings you down to that walkway that's shown on the site plan. And then there's an entrance off of Fletcher Street that brings you into the foyer of the building 
to the office spaces as well as access to the elevator and the uh, stairway. This is a typical uh, floor plan for each floor, showing each of the four units that are just under 800 square feet. This is the elevation. Barry, you wanna run through the elevation? Hi, I am Barry Gannick, Gannick Architects, uh, architect of the record for this. The building, um, as shown, uh, we got to this point through discussions with the Historic Commission uh, several years ago at this point, and the main goal was to achieve a product that was not a replica of period pieces, uh, buildings in the area, but something that took elements of uh, earlier design. So the massing is you know, a stack of units of apartment floors, um, the extension of the bays over the sidewalk are elements that you see throughout the city um, in various shapes, sometimes uh, squared off like this, sometimes in, uh, with angled bays. Uh, the materials are a mix of um, historic uh, materials such as the brick that would be at the base and going up uh, in corners and uh, recessed areas, the, the main walls of the building on the property line. And the extended structure would be a clabbered material but not wood, perhaps a fiber cement. So it's a mix of contemporary and uh, historic materials. The organization of the building with commercial at the base is something that is uh, traditional in the city, in an, uh, the urban environment. Um, and we built out to the sidewalk, you know, such that is appropriate in the area. Um, I wanted to talk also about the shadow studies. And I have, I have some sure, absolutely. Oh, you have those? Great. It better in color, you can see it better than when we get it in black and white. These drawings show shadow study and also indicate the massing of the proposed building in context with uh, surrounding existing buildings. And where we are projecting right now the height of the building to be plus or minus 60 feet. You can see adjacent buildings range from there's a low building across the street at 37. But uh, McKittrick across the street is already uh, 50 feet, 47 directly across Worthen Street. And of course, the um, museum building is 56 plus or minus. And of course, the courthouse is much higher. It's 90 to 100 square feet. Yeah. So you, know, you can see that the building is not at a scale with uh, surrounding buildings at all. Um, we looked at two times uh, the solstice uh, in January and in December, I mean in July, one more time, June and December. This particular uh, study shows June um, solstice at 7 p.m. when the shadows would be longest. And you can see the angle of the sun that the shadow from the new building is across uh, open space and not onto adjacent properties in any way casting. Um, and you can see the length of the uh, shadows of the taller buildings as well. December's on the other side. Yeah, yeah thank you. On the December study, you can see this is 3 o'clock in the afternoon, longest shadows. It's be dark much, uh, not much later after this. The shadow is still just going straight back um, across the Western Canal and just touching uh, the museum. Um, so it's not having a, a big impact on the uh, adjacent buildings. Okay. 
Um, and we've gone through the plans already. Uh, I'll be available for more questions. Thank you. Also, I, I, I just wanted to point out that there, the, there's the Route 6 bus schedule. I believe they... The Route 6 bus schedule is called the Broadway slash UMass Low bus schedule, which goes right... There's a bus stop at Dutton Street at the what was once the Lowell Sun building. So there's a bus stop right there where residents could take that bus and go directly to the train station. So it would be efficient for a commute of anybody in this building who would be using the, uh, you know, the transportation available at the train station. Yeah, we could take uh, questions from the board at this point. Okay. <clears throat> I just have one before I open up to the public, uh, and then we'll get a question from the board. Um, Council, I know you covered basically everything that was addressed on um, Francesca's memo to us, um, and then Matt mentioned about the three-foot overhang. Um, the only thing I don't think you touched on was could you, number seven. I know you talked about the parking, but Fran made a question about the transit demand management plan. It it. The, I got, I addressed that, I believe, in a kind of random way of, of, of discussing exactly where these residents would be parking. Okay. Uh, the improvements to the uh, intersection there where they would be able to drive from this unit. And right now you can't drive up Thorndike or Fletcher Street and take a left on Dutton Street. But once the Lord Overpass improvements are made, you'll be able to go ahead and do that. They'll be able to drive from there, take a left on Dutton Street, and go directly to the parking garage. Uh, also, as far as the uh, you know, transportation demand management plan, the bus schedule shows that there are uh, bus stops right there on, on Dutton Street that would be able to, residents would be able to take the, take the bus and go directly to the train station they could take the bus and go downtown and shop. They could take the bus and go to the market basket and shop. Um, also, I haven't had any information right now, but I'm sure that the Hamilton Canal District will open up and we will have areas there, and I don't have any of that information, for pedestrian traffic to get directly to that. Right now, we don't have easy accessibility to that, but that will be there to open up all those amenities that will be there for the residents, either by foot or by vehicular traffic. Fran, would that be something that staff is looking for? Or are you looking for more in detail on that for the, on your comment on number seven? Um, yeah, I think we were just looking for um, ways that the development could support alternative modes of transit. So okay. the interior bike storage is something okay. that we would be interested in. Okay. Um, and then he also touched on the bus system, so. All right, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Council. Okay, anything else for the applicant? If not, I'll open it up to the public. Anything else, Council? Uh, no, okay. no. At this point in time, anybody like to speak in favor of the project? Anybody in favor? In favor, in favor? We have anybody on Zoom, um, Fran, who's checking in? We have anybody on Zoom who might be looking in? Uh, we do, but they have not unmuted themselves. Okay. So nothing in favor, favor, favor? Hearing none at this point? Well, anybody in opposition? In opposition? In opposition? Hearing none? At this point in time, I'll turn it over to the board members. I have one. Mr. Lockhart, sure. Just about stormwater and your progress and uh, you're working with the team. Where does that stand? Yeah, so we, um, we have had a meeting uh, with 
uh, a portion of the stormwater team, uh, namely uh, Mike Stewart down at the wastewater division who heads up the stormwater uh, review on this. Uh, we would be um, making a, a direct connection to the existing drainage uh, out in the street and we've uh, had those discussions already. All right, thank you. All set. Okay. Caleb or Bob, any questions, comments? I have a question, Mr. Sure, Mr. Mr. Malovich. Uh, the commercial space, there's no parking at all on this building. What, what are we gonna do about people trying to stop on the street? Is there parking spaces around the building? There, there is parking, uh, metered parking on Worthen Street, which is adjacent to the building. Yeah. Uh, that could be used. There's also, and I didn't bring this up before, there's also parking along a strip that is owned by the National Park. Now, we don't have necessarily say that we're going to go park there, but there could be some parking available there if we have some discussions with the members of the National Park. And could you point that out, Matt? Yeah, that is there. There's some green space there, and there's some parking over there. Um, we we do feel positive that we'll have we'll be successful in buying the adjacent lot. Uh, as it stands, you know, we had nego we had discussions in the past on it, and we will cont we will uh, revive those discussions to purchase that very small lot, which I believe has maybe five spaces that seven spaces we didn't include that in this application at so all those because that's something that we want to pursue down the road but we, we didn't include that in this application okay. but the other thing about the parking you're getting some if we allow the reduction you'll have 20 spaces or how many spaces at the um, garage near we have we have uh, 40 we have the required 40 spaces at the garage for the residential, and we have nine spaces uh, for the commercial. Okay. Um, are those spaces tied to the building unit, or the residential and, and the units, or as part of the rent, or is that going to be up to the people who rent those spaces? We, we haven't had any further discussions with the parking director other than the director has indicated that the number of spaces are available to us, the 49 spaces are available to us at the current rate, that the contract rate that the city provides. It would be to our benefit when we go forward on this project, especially dealing with the bank to secure financing, if we're gonna be building these units that are gonna be uh, you know, brand new units that we would be able to tell those, to tell the bank that these residents have guaranteed parking. So we'll do whatever we have to do to obtain those leases uh, in advance. But right now we don't have those. The one thing I don't want to see is somewhere down the road, there's no more room in the garage. And if it's up to the tenant to rent the space, they're going to decide not to, and then there's going to be, you'll have no parking for that building. No, uh, it, it, I'd rather see it tied to each unit, so that whoever rents that unit has is given parking, a parking permit or whatever the parking card from the builder or who's renting that space. The I, landlord has to provide that uh, card. I don't want to be left up to the tenants to pay the parking garage because they won't if they don't have to. I, I think it makes sense to make that a condition on this, uh, on this permit. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Bob. Caleb? Oh, thank you. Um, so to, uh, to clarify, is this going to be apartment building or condo building? 
it's going to be it's it's not going to be organized into condominiums it's not going to be sold as condominiums it's going to be a, an apartment building mr natali owns uh of over 100 units in the city uh quite a through through dutton street he's redeveloping a building at 279 dutton street and that's being redeveloped into apartments and he's going to rent and hold those this will be developed into apartments where, in which he's going to rent and hold them. I see. Um, regarding the parking, now mentioning that the 40 spaces will be at the garage, so do you still need the 50% reduction from the planning board? I I, mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm still seeking the special permit for the reduction. Uh, so, I, uh, I think it's in terms of, I mean, maybe it's, asking for a, a belt and suspenders on this. Um, but uh, we still will, uh, as Mr. Malovich pointed out, he wants it a requirement there for, and I, we're in agreement on that, Mr. Natale is in agreement on that, to provide parking for each one of those units in the parking garage. In the parking garage. Otherwise, it's not a good marketable project. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify with maybe Frank can help, like so if they can have 40 spaces at a parking garage, do they need the reduction? I just say, I want to clear that we were not reducing a 20 so that they only need to get 20 like, down the line. No, what this does, I don't want to interrupt Fran, is what this does is it makes obtaining the, the variance from the Board of Appeals uh, and asking for a variance from the Board of Appeals for 20 spaces rather than 40 spaces. It makes that uh, a, a, a little bit easier to make that argument. So, Chairman, do we got to decide before a ZBA? I mean, that, that's We can do that under the special permit. Oh, I see. We have yeah. the authority to do so regardless of what the ZBA does. I under the special permit, we can consider the parking. Right. Absolutely. And we can put any condition on that parking that we see fit. So they would have to satisfy our special permit as well as any variance relief they request from ZBA. Yep. Yeah. Because so our special permit, regardless of what ZBA does, we can restrict the parking, uh, control it as we see necessary to accommodate um, the people in the building. Yeah. So, like, um, because uh, usually we, we, we receive the applicant application after a ZBA mm -hmm. hearing. Right. Um, I have a, regarding the ZBA, uh, the variances, I, I do feel that the applicant is asking for a lot of variance here. I mean, like you're looking at two more than maximum um, floor areas ratio, and then you're asking for a lot less land area per dwelling unit. Now that's not in a preview, but like I do want, I feel more comfortable after, like to, to have the ZBA decide before considering the, um, the site plan. And, because, I, I mean, if the ZBA denies that, we don't have a site plan here, basically. So that's my, my, my take on that one. The, the, the only defense I can give you on that, I, I have seen uh, and, and witnessed similar projects, uh, which uh, have civil, similar projects. Uh, one was on Middlesex Street, uh, in which that had no parking at all. And uh, they received variances in which they had no parking. Uh, in order for that project to go forward, they had to, it was, it was evident that they had to receive the variances or else there was no pro project. If we receive site plan review and we don't get the variances, we don't have the project. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, basically, if we approved it and then you don't get the relief you're looking for from the ZBA, which looks like threefold, then the project wouldn't go forward because you need the combination of our relief as well as the ZBA relief. That is correct. Okay. I got you. Right. And it's important. And that means so any conditions that we have, like indicated for the parking, as indicated, we can control it by our special permit. Right. Um, That's right. right. I mean, the site plan, we, we look at parking as well, but I think we have a lot more strength than the special permit, obviously, because that's one of the requests that you're requesting. I agree. I see. 
But I think, Caleb, I think on the special permit, we have the teeth regardless of what happens in the ZBA. And if they don't get all the relief from the ZBA, then the project's not going to flourish or I'll go forward as indicated. So I'm guessing they'll probably have to wait until they get the other parcel and then maybe come back in the future. Maybe. I don't know. It, it, yeah. If Maybe. I, I'm just yeah, yeah, it, talking about I mean, maybe that, picking up more parking. But. Uh, we'd, we'd pick up more parking or if, if we were forced into a situation to mm -hmm. to look to to so they basically actually need, lease all those it, and, and under under the provision there, which is it's in, interesting under the provision of six point one six point six one five. If we had a lease for all right now, if we had a lease from the city for all the parking, right. we would have it as a matter of right. I can't stand before you and say that we do. We don't. Okay. Okay. I got you. So, um, okay. Thanks for clarifying. I, I think I can look at just that special permit alone. Yeah. I mean, I understand there is different steps. Mm -hmm. and, um, regarding that, I feel like um, as, as um, I think as the board have mentioned about uh, the TDM before, I think that's a key element in that request for uh, reduction of parking. Now, I, I acknowledge the the uh, the bus lot, bus route that you mentioned, and also the proximity to the parking lot. But but I want to see a little bit more concrete in the way that like having a TDM plan kind of tells you that the owner or the landlord, what, a, what is the landlord going to do to, to help people to not, you know, either have the car or at least it, the absence of parking on site, right? So, so I, I feel that, that that's, that's something important. And, and I remember there's another project down in the middle, Middlesex Street that uh, has similar issues and they, they do have a TDM T, uh, TDM plan that that um, that is submitted and the board look at it and also we give them the reduction and well we uh, did um, um, we did offer to uh, which is I think makes uh, perfect sense to offer the the uh, bike bike rack in the uh, in the lobby and and I believe in talking to Mr. Natale that that would include both both uh, he would also include both electric bicycles to make it a little bit easier for people to get around. Um, and and uh, you know we, we do have the, the uh, bus route that goes by. And on top of that, you know I asked the board to, to consider the fact that you know this is city living. What we will do, we just can't put it upon them and say you have to tolerate this. We want to provide for the residents a, a loading area. If we can get one space for a loading area there, I think that's critical so that people can drive up, have a place, a secure place to park, unload their groceries, unload furniture uh, when they're moving in or out of the premises, uh, uh, unload you you they're buying utilities and that's something that we are going to look forward to and request that from the City Council I see so I I believe those factors there you take everything the totality of all of that and and consider it that it it it's something that could work I don't think there's a magic bullet or a magic plan that I can stand here and otherwise give to you other than saying that all those elements together can work. Okay, I, I just think that like if you have a plan, it doesn't have to be elaborate. I mean, that will that will at least be more proactive because as you mentioned, like uh, I know the 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 owners, you know, trying to make this work, but like it's also uh, I think there's a there's a uh, connection between the owner and the tenants as well, and so like helping the tenants to understand that this is city living. That, that's the key, right? Because they will be the one who are parking. I, I, I just don't want, you know, the street to be, you know, people have been looking for parking at night and then, and then you spill over the, the National Park Service and then they complain, right? Then, then that wouldn't do justice. Well, I, th I think Mr. Malovich's condition on this, that the landlord provide parking 
for the tenants and making that a condition solves that issue. Parking and the parking that the landlord is going to provide is parking in the Hamilton Canal garage. I mean, that is, yeah, yeah, I that's, the best I, that's the best I can, I, can, I can give you. Well, but people like to have their parking right beneath their, their building, you know. I, mean, but I, I, know, I, I understand I, six minutes. I can't offer that. <laughs> it's not realistic for us to be able to offer that. It's, it's a, it's, if we're going to develop something that's in the city, then people are going to adapt and live in the city they're going to go to and from a parking garage, which is less than a five-minute walk. Uh, they are going to perhaps take public transportation to the train station, to their job. Um, so those are things that they can do while they're in that, in that building. Uh, uh, but being able to say that we're going to satisfy and giving someone parking right next to the building yes i can't offer that oh I, 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 i'm not asking for that either yes so that's why uh, I, I don't think we're in disagreement i just think that the tdm plan that's why it is needed is to because absence of parking right next to the building that i i feel like that that we need that narrative to say okay what's the plan here and how are you going to help your tenants to understand or market to the tenants that you know, things to expect and not, not to expect a on-site park. But if, if, if I'm offering those tenants when they, when they sign a lease, if, I, I'm, if I'm providing parking for those tenants in the parking garage and those tenants enter into this with their eyes wide open and understand that they're going to be provided parking in the parking garage and they're going to be fully aware of the location of the building and where the parking garage is, what's the mystery? It's clear, it's clear cut to them, and I, I think that, that that works, and I think that works for this project. Okay. It, I'm asking you, uh, as in common sense, do you believe that if a tenant is given a lease, that we provide for parking in the lease in the Hamilton Canal uh, parking garage, which is less than uh, an eight-minute walk, that we've satisfied their requirements without hiding anything from them. So they'll know that their parking is not in front of the building. Their parking, their right to the parking is at the garage. And, and I think if you just put this into a piece of paper, what, what you just, all the things that you mentioned, which are great, that will make the TDM plan. That this, and then I, I think having that is helpful uh, through this process so that we don't just reduce the parking requirement. If, if it's made a condition as a decision on the special permit, would that satisfy you? Well, well certainly. Well, I mean, if this, you, I mean, because, I mean, without that, then you're just, you know, you're promising things, but like when it comes to we have to reapprove it, you know. We I'm not promising things if, if we're mandated to fulfill those requirements as part of the special permit that would come from this board. Okay. Well, you're asking for a reduction of parking requirement, right? And I so like, and, and the things that you just mentioned help toward that requests and I'm just saying then if you can put in writing of like you know pointing out all these great things that can help toward that you know request then that will be the TDM plan oh, we'll go ahead right? and do that uh, yes uh, 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 and, I don't know how I can convince you to make it a condition of the decision I don't see that I don't know what a difference does oh, I mean you can if, if I mean, it comes from you or if it comes from from the members of the board to make that a condition of the decision. But if that's in order for me to gain your support, we'll go ahead and, and do that. Thank you. Um, I, I know we were real sore in time, but um, I, I see that the floor plan, I couldn't see the bike racks and 
No, we, we don't have one. Uh, the floor plan doesn't show a bike rack in there. Okay. The, the comments were received on last Thursday, the 16th. Got it. Uh, and in that time, we were able to produce a shadow study, uh, but we did not redo the plans I to see. show that. Again, that's something from, that's something I, I believe that we could make in condition on a decision. And, and the same for the loading area and, and the trash. I don't see a trash area either. No, but that's, okay. that's something that we, we are going to have a trash area there with the receptacles for the trash, for the recycling, and have a private trash pickup. Got it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Caleb. Um, could I just have um, Matt up? Where would the, that adjacent, um, excuse me, that loading area be on the plan? The one they consider about maybe going before the council to get so people can drop their uh, uh, groceries off or something. You know what that would be, Matt? I mean, let me see if I can pull up my. Go back to that. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, yeah right there on Worthen Street, on that side. Yeah. Right there. So it's like not on the main. It's not on the main street to to obstruct any traffic or anything. I'm going back to that ye yellow one you gave us with the yellow piece on it. Yeah. So on this one here, where would it be? Right on the left. So where would you put it? So it would be off the street by the by the um, on, on city property? No, no, the city property is here. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it'd be uh, a floating area right on Worthen Street. Okay. Yeah. What would that look like? Just uh, uh, you you know, there's um, the one that I know of is at 100 Merrimack, where it just says 15 minute loading and unloading. Okay. okay. So, you know, it could be for delivery vehicles. It could be for people just to run up and bring their groceries up and down, back down. So it would be a limited area for loading, but yeah, thanks. Yep. Because you'd also want, um, obviously, uh, anybody who wants to move into this housing is going to be bringing things into the building. And they don't Correct. want to carry that stuff oh, yeah. from the garage. So I just moved to a city <laughs> I mean, myself. If, if you're moving, you don't want to carry everything from the garage. I just moved to a city myself, and we had to call up the city the day before or a few days before, and they, um, they'll they allocate spaces along the street temporarily for the time period needed in order to do a, an unloading onto the street. Sort of like moving into college. A little you bit different, but, fit, but yeah. we had to formally get a, yeah. you know, you formally get the meters to be... Yeah. Uh, not accessible, so you can do a full move with a right. large truck. Yeah. Yeah. The other, the other thing about this area that's a little underlooked here is this entire paved area here. In this area here is really only going to be useful to access this building, because right now it's just a, a, it's it's nobody uses it. So the intention would be, if you purchased a lot to the right, that would be just for parking for your building that you're discussing this evening? This area right here would primarily service the, uh, the bottom unit for the retail office area. Yeah. Yeah. And we could have a, a, a loading area here as well. But this entire paved area here is, is completely empty. But would you use that area to the right for parking as well, I mean? This area here? Yeah, to the right of the proposed building now. Yes, we would. Okay, so you'd use that for, if you get if you do get that thing, you'd use that for maybe loading bay, parking, sure. and whatever. Right. Okay. And then we we actually uh, way back when we had because this whole area is being improved, we we were going to cut through the curb here yeah. and then do one way angle parking mm -hmm. here to because you can create um, I believe uh, ten spaces <coughs> so right in here. So go way back when. So I believe the building to the right there, wasn't that a um, nightclub or a bar at one time as well? This building? The one to the right of Furies, right there. There's no, this is a parking area. That, was, that wasn't a club at one time? No? Okay. No, the, on the other side, oh, okay. there's a, on, on the other side. Over in here? A, uh, okay. a, uh, an Asian restaurant. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's over in here. Okay. And they, they, they have their own parking there. And then behind there at one point, didn't Kazan didn't have a garage back there at one time? The Kazan, the Kazan, Kazan did have a garage yeah. back there. <laughs> and then behind that was a giant store. 
The giant Where the little sun is now. Right, was right. in the other building. Yeah, going way back now. That's so, right. So today, you can drive your car down here. You yeah. can take a right on Hayden. Yep. Okay. And basically, there's a fence section. There's a guardrail section. Yep. That's right here. Everyone goes across this corner. Okay. I got you. Okay. And, every, and that's what brings you access to here and to these parking spaces. Okay. okay. So these parking spaces are accessed through cutting through and coming around like this huh. to that existing uh, business there. Okay. Do any other board members have any further comments? Okay, so I think um, what they're looking for tonight is, I think we need three different votes. One for site plan and two for special permit. Mr. Chairman, through you, is there anything else I can offer uh, to, to, to Member Cheng uh, with respect to this? I, I believe we've, we've exhausted every area here and uh, that we've made certain conditions that we are going to be giving these individuals the parking in the Hamilton Canal grounds <clears throat> as a condition of this permit and as a condition of, of, their, of their lease. So um, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, I, I think I would like to see a TDM plan. Uh, and and yeah. I think the staff comment already explained what a TDM plan does very clearly. Um, is that to outline how the applicant plans on compensating <coughs> for lack of off-street parking on site. Now, the other things that you mentioned, like including the interior parking, uh, uh, parking racks, uh, electric bike, if that's what the um, owner decide to do um, and uh, also um, member Malovich request for the uh, offering parking space in the garage for the uh, for the re residents and also the, the um, bus routes like that pass by all these things I think are elements that will be key in your TDM plan but I just want to see a document that will outline all these things right I don't, is it too much to ask for? No, 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 it isn't. Uh, we can, uh, what I was trying to do was to memorialize all those elements in the decision. It's certainly not, not, not anything out of the ordinary mm -hmm. to ask for that, that we can provide that and hit all those bullet points and bring those to you and, and come back again at the next meeting. I mean, I, in a way, I mean, I, I feel that what you mentioned are are adequate and I'm okay to m make it a condition to work, uh, for you to work with the uh, DPD staff to work that out. I mean, if 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 um, the condition that Member Malovich, I I, I agree with those conditions that Member Malovich proposed uh, to make those the the parking uh, a requirement for the landlord to provide the parking. I agree with the conditions to provide the interior uh, bicycle racks uh, with, with, with electric bicycles to be provided by the landlord as well. Uh, we agree to the condition to provide a loading area. I think that's essential. Okay. But, but I, I just, I, I'm just adding the TDM as part of a condition that you can work with TBD. We, we, absolutely, plan. we will work with them and, yes. provide, and provide them with a plan that will incorporate those elements so that there's no question with respect to what we are doing uh, with the residents for pedestrian and vehicular transportation. Great, I think we're on the same page. Good, Great. thank you. Um, just one more thing, I think the TDM plan also have elements of how you communicate to the tenants. I think that's a key component. I mean, without that, you, know, you can provide all these things and they don't know about it or they, they don't think about it, right? So there's that, that could be, I, I, I wish it could be a component that you look into as well. 
So, um, Chairman, if the other members feel uh, agree, then I, I make a motion to um, appro approve uh, upon some conditions on site plan and, or special permit, whichever. Comes okay. So, <clears throat> what I think we could do is, if you want to take it that, that way, Caleb, what I would suggest is that we would make the motion to approval. We start off with the site plan, right. mm -hmm. with the condition being. Um, Number one, I would indicate maybe um, the bike rack in the lobby, and they would obviously they're going to look to also put the electric bikes in the lobby. Um, number two, to um, hopefully work with the city council to see if they can add a loading area. Um, number three, to the landlord provide parking for tenants in the uh, Hamilton Canal parking garage, 40 uh, parking spaces for the residents and nine for the commercial and have that um, um, assigned for those parking spaces for a total of the 49 sp spaces. Um, and went to also number four, that they would have the pr private trash brought out in the lobby. And number five, for the applicant to submit a transit demand management plan uh, to outline more in detail, in including the um, conditions as outlined by the board this evening, um, and also con consider bus routes and alternative ways to compensate for the lack of off-street parking. Would that be sufficient, Caleb? Uh, that will be a, upon the satisfaction of DPD staff. Okay, yes. so then, so, and then, so have the, um, the transit demand plan um, be submitted to staff. Mm -hmm. And if there any questions on that, they could all, we could always get a copy of that in the future, Fran, that's no problem. So basically, I think um, that kind of outlines a lot of what you indicated, Council, in regards to the transit demand management. But if you could put that in writing, and, as well as a lot of other things that you alluded to about the, um, you know, the bus routes and other things how you mentioned, and you know, any any um, pedestrian access to the garage and how far it is, which you had in the plan, which you showed to us tonight. So it would come all in under that under that plan i i think all of that all of that makes sense I mean, so a lot of it is what you said tonight but this yes. might be in the in the plan um management plan the dep the deputy satisfactory caleb uh there's storm water as well i think they they, they said okay with the storm water i'll, I'll continue to work with storm water in yep. chairman uh, if i may uh, we'll we'll modify the floor plan to show uh those individual components of the uh trash receptacle in the um in the bike rack interior okay. to the building so um okay. i can put that in the form of a motion with those conditions uh chairman yeah, also the, i know there is a lot of but go ahead. additional um the uh historical board review i suppose they have to go through anyway okay but. and get approval by historic board yes uh, okay. uh, I should be there too. So caleb I, do you want to make that motion with the conditions as i outlined then yes okay so fran do you think you have those okay so basically, it was a lot of indicated, the bike rack thing, try to work with the city council for the loading area. Um, obviously, the parking in the garage is outlined with the lease for the 40 residential and nine commercial in the garage, um, the private trash pickup, the stormwater, the stork board, and the transit demand um, management plan to be submitted to planning staff. So that's a motion made by Caleb in regards to the site plan. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Lockhart. So the site plan is approved. So now we have a special permit for the proposed use. I'll make a motion to approve with the same conditions that was outlined by the site plan. Do we have a second on that matter? Oh, actually, let me back up. On front of the site plan, there's a motion by Caleb and, um, and second by Mr. Lockhart. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes yes. Any opposition, hear and no? None, so that matter passes four in favor, none against. I, I'm gonna go too fast that time. So now for the special permit, the proposed use, I'll make a motion with the same conditions as outlined in the site plan. Do we have a second for the special permit? A second. N Caleb second that matter. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any opposition, hearing none. So that matter carries. Four in favor, none against. Okay. And the last special permit is for the reduced parking. 
in non-residential parking requirements by 50%. We need a vote on that one as well. I said you want to make that one. You want to vote on that I'll one? I'll move the okay, Mr. approval Ma of that. With the same conditions, Bob? And with the same conditions as outlined in the first two? And the other conditions okay. applies there too. So we have Mr. Malovich um, made a motion to approve the special permit with the same conditions that were outlined by the previous site plan and special permit. We need a second on that matter. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, Mr. I'll Mr. Lockhart, second that matter. No. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, chair votes yes. Any opposition hearing none. So basically you received the two special permits and the site plan. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very well. much. Uh, oh, nice, nice project. Okay, moving along on the agenda, we have other business, minor modification and extension at 555 Merrimack Street. The applicant is seeking a one-year extension to the site plan review and special permit approvals. They are also seeking multiple modifications to the original site plan approval and special permit. The original site plan review and special permit approvals were issued on December 19, 2017 and were extended to 2019 for an additional two years. The applicant is now seeking a one-year extension until December 19, 2022. May we hear from the applicant, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, uh, for the record, Attorney Joseph Claremont representing the applicant, Coalition for a Better Acre, relative to the property at 555 Merrimack Street, uh, has was stated uh, on December 17th of 2017 this board voted to approve the site plan and a special permit to demolish the existing structure and construct uh, a new four-story multi-use building. Uh, in October 19th of 2019, the planning board voted in, uh, to grant a two-year extension as funding had not been uh, yet received uh, within that two-year period. Now funding is secured and uh, the CBA is ready to move forward. And we're back seeking uh, two things essentially. One is an extension of the special permit and the site plan approval for one year because we believe we can start uh, the work within that year. And two would be a approval of some minor modifications to the plan or what we believe are minor modifications. <coughs> one would be to uh, finalize the proposed water service location. Uh, two, finalize the electrical conduit location three, to add a bike rack on the west side of the building, uh, four, uh, to shift the handicapped parking space, uh, five would be to swap the transformer and dumpster location, uh, next to update the path uh, from the egress door, also to locate the electric vehicle spaces, and to add a short ramp with handrails on the canal side of the property which will be added to ensure uh, ADA uh, accessibility. Uh, we did receive a note from the fire department. They've requested that the fire department connection be moved from the Canal Street side of the building to the Merrimack Street side, although it's probably not the best aesthetically. The fire department feels it's best, uh, and uh, we'd certainly agree with that. So all of those uh, ch uh, changes, uh, we believe, are minor modifications. Uh, we have outlined them in red on the original plans, uh, and, and uh, the engineers from Hancock will take you through the changes if we could. Chair Chairman, for the record, I'm recusing myself from this. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, for the record, I'm Russell Tedford with Hancock Associates. I'm one of the project engineers on this project. Um, so to start off on the site modifications, 
on sheet three of the plan set. This is our layout materials. Um, as highlighted um, in that presentation, we've added two handicap accessible ramps. Um, these are all tied into um, uh, utility room, mechanical room, um, secondary access for the laundromat and stairwell. Um, and these all connect into the existing brick walkway on the canal side. Um, also, as a condition that uh, the attorney just mentioned, a proposed bike rack is also on the canal side. Um, moving over towards the handicap parking, uh, we were able to provide two spaces and shift uh, the layout around to make sure that we are not losing any of the proposed parking from the previous plant set. Um, also shown the flipping of the transformer and the dumpster pad. Uh, and additionally, we are proposing an electric vehicle charging station that will be designated in this parking spot right here with the kiosk being just off pavement there. Um, also, oh, and also um, they're proposing another bike rack adjacent to the parking um, on the east side of the building. Um, and just to highlight changes to our, uh, the utility drawing, um, several, several items such as the water, sewer, drainage were all tweaked after we had plumbing engineers and um, other coordination parts on that. And, uh, just a matter of in, you know, invert numbers that may differ in locations to match up where the um, water and electric are going to hook up. Um, yeah, and, and as seen here, the hookup for the electric is going to be coming off of Moody Street, go to the transformer, and hit the front entrance of the building where the electric room is. And hold on, let me, oh, and also um, we had coordinated with Mike Stewart of Lowell Wastewater um, on both the sewer connection and as well to make sure we are fully compliant with stormwater management um, regulations that he has set forth. And I believe we had that conversation back in 2020 that we are fully compliant. Um, And as also as one of the conditions of approval, we had to provide a full landscaping plan set. And here um, the applicant is proposing both screening for the transformer and dumpster area um, along this northern property line here. And extensive planting along the canal side um, is sort of a, create a very open and nice corridor um, for egress with a lot of low, uh, low uh, growing shrubs, uh, ground covers, grasses, kind of um, really uplift that space and make it you know, more friendly for pedestrians and people who might utilize that. And um, that is it in terms of our site plan modifications. Um, additional tweaks are related um, to the details. Um, that's sheets seven and eight of the plan set. Um, and those were just tied in as part of uh, preparing for the construction bid process. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, as, as noted, uh, several of the changes or changes to the plan were actually referenced in the original decision and now have been added to the plan, and those were highlighted there. Our, our final request is regarding the parking. Uh, there's 23 parking spaces on the site, including uh, two handicapped uh, spaces which the board found to be sufficient at the time of approval when coupled with 15 dedicated spaces in a public parking facility within 1500 feet. Uh, we're now uh, requesting that the board consider waiving that requirement of 15 additional off-site parking spots for the following reasons. When CBA originally considered uh, a retail use for the ground floor, 
they're now going to use that ground floor for laundry facilities for the building and not retail. Uh, so there'd be no public access to the laundry facility, which would obviously reduce the traffic and the, and the need for parking. Uh, secondly, the intended population of the building will be residents with uh, substance use disorders. The service provider has indicated it's unlikely residents will have cars, especially at the beginning. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, CBA owns uh, two other parking areas in proximity to the building, actually closer than the city garage would be. One is 341 feet uh, from the entrance of the uh, of 555 Merrimack. One is 442. And these would be sufficient to handle any overflow, which we don't feel there'll be any if the need ever arises. As I said, they're closer than the city garage. Uh, so we'd res uh, respectfully request the three things. One is extension of the special permit for a one year period. Two, a vote that the changes that were reviewed uh, represent minor changes, and three, a vote to approve the plan changes and waiver of the requirement to obtain the 15 dedicated spots in the city garage. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Council. I can't help but think when I was looking over our previous uh, agenda and uh, approval back there, how it Attorney James Flood brought this before us. Yeah. Yes, he And I was thinking of that, and I was talking to yeah. board members earlier this evening about yeah. Attorney Flood coming and how dearly we miss him before this board. Yeah. But uh, looking at it, uh, I'm saying, oh, yeah, I'm trying to think about it and everything else. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Flood, Mr. Flood. We haven't seen him on too many of my materials, but obviously we miss him. He did a great job. That's uh, for sure. Any of the board members have any discussions? Mr. Chairman, I just uh, have a clarification, if, and maybe if I heard it correctly. On the plan, it's showing the commercial space, but uh, Attorney Claymont, are you saying that that is no longer going to be the case? That's correct. Uh, the uh, retail commercial space will no longer be utilized. They're going to use the first floor area for laundry facilities for the building. Oh. So, so if we would add that then to the modification, because I didn't see that, and it's still on the plan at that would no longer be commercial space and it would be laundry space for the residents That's that are correct. residing there. So I certainly, okay. And then uh, I think really that was, I just wanted to, to clarify that. I think actually the parking you're providing now is probably better than even what we were originally looking for. Right? You're 400 feet away, so uh, uh, and then based on the recommendation from the fire department, you're okay with that. Um, and I, from my perspective, the other changes do not appear to be major. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm okay. Any other board members have any questions? Comments. Richard? I have none, no. None? Um, Bob and Caleb, any questions? Uh, I... No. Okay. So I guess the um, first vote we'd need would be um, whether this is a modifica minor modification or substantial material change. Uh, I will make a motion that this is a minor modification. I will second that motion. Motion's made by the chair and second by Mr. Lockhart. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, that vote is allowed. That motion is allowed, excuse me. Um, the next request, I'm, I'm, do we want to go with the waiver first or the modifications? Um, Either way, right? You're requesting a waiver and then the modification? Actually, we're requesting extension. Oh, extension, I'm sorry, yeah. Extension. Extension. Minor extension. changes yeah. Yeah. and the waiver. Okay. And the waiver. So we'll do the extension last, if that's okay. So then we'll have, hopefully, everything lined up. Everything lined up. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll so, make a motion for the waiver. Okay. Um, with uh, uh, adopting the, uh, the following uh, modifications. Uh, beyond what was submitted here this evening and recognizing what the applicant has agreed to uh, with respect to the recommendation from the fire department to move the, uh, the fire department connection. Um, also, uh, just uh, if I heard that correctly, I think it would just final uh, approval by uh, city engineer and stormwater management just to make sure there aren't any outstanding issues there. 
Um, and then again, to waive the, uh, the parking requirement as, um, as they are requesting, and then to um, uh, make it conditional upon the fact that the commercial space will no longer be commercial space as originally proposed, and that will be used for uh, laundry uh, space for the tenants. Okay, so we have the motion by Mr. Pichette. Do we have a second? No second that. Okay, second by Mr. Malamich. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes yes. So that motion carries. So do we need? And that would be for the extension. Okay. All right. Sorry. So I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting a one-year extension, is that correct? Yes. yes. Make a motion to extend the uh, uh, proposal for an additional year, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Motion made in the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes yes. Any opposition? Hearing no. None. That motion carries. Is that completed, Mr. Claremont? Or did we miss anything? That's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Good seeing you again, Council. Nice to see you. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, move it along on the agenda. Does any of the planning board members have any updates on the various boards that they represent? Yes, I have a, an historic board update. Um, as I've spoken in the past, I've been working on uh, mural standards. At our last meeting this, this month, we had an app, two applications actually from Project Learn here in Lowell for, um, for murals. And one of them is, um, you know, the parking lot is the Athenian corner, that oh, yeah. big wall there. That's one location. And there's another location on Dutton Street. I think it's 167. They were both approved for location only. Um, there's got to be, like, the, the uh, one on the Athenian corner, the, the brick needs to be looked at closer to the uh, it looks like it was, if you drive by there, it looks like loose brick is, is there. Uh, so it, they were voted on, and they were voted on for location only. It's progress. I think pretty soon you'll be seeing some nice, nice work that uh, um, came along very nicely. Okay. Thank you. And that's all. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just an sure. uh, update on NEMCOG, and I know, Mr. Chairman, you served, and in, in, uh, Mr. Lockhart uh, served uh, as well, but uh, uh, it was announced uh, a few months ago that uh, Beverly Woods, the executive director, is uh, retiring at the end of the year, so the, um, I am one of the counselors that's on the search committee, and uh, we are accepting applications till the end of September, and we'll begin the, uh, the interview process. Also, the executive, uh, the assistant director, Jay Dunneman, is retiring uh, mid-October, and so we're uh, also looking to fill that position and uh, have received uh, applications, and um, I'm also on the personnel committee, so we'll be, we'll be interviewing candidates uh, for that position, and um, so we, uh, and we did create a, another position with uh, Jay Dunneman uh, retiring, so uh, we were filling that position as well. So there's going to be some changes in that organization at the, wow. at the top. So uh, if we're, we've been very fortunate to have some stability uh, at that uh, the executive level for many, many years. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of planning agencies don't have it, didn't have, haven't had that luxury. So, uh, uh, you know, and it's important as the, the, the uh, selection of, of the next director at this point. So, so just, a, just an update of where we're Yeah, going. because I know. Beverly was when the was there when I was on the board back in the eighties. She, I think she goes back about forty years now. Wow. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, I've been done with Terry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was there in the mid eighties, she was already she was working there already. Good. Yeah, she's been there for a long time. Yeah. So I wish we wish them both well. So, uh, Fran, any com any further comments from staff? Uh, I know you gave us some handouts for future meetings, but besides that, um, <clears throat> well, Sinead is not here to comment on the CPC. Um, current events, but uh, they have received a slew of eligibility applications, I think 11 total, and some of the projects are really exciting, so I'm sure you'll be hearing more about it. Um, 
they haven't submitted their full applications. It's just an eligibility round where the board determines whether they're eligible for CPA funds. Um, but we are really excited. A lot of um, a lot of historic preservation related proposals. Um, one of them is Raleigh's Farm in Pawtucketville. They're looking to. Um, so I think the. I always forget what this is called. Parks and Conservation Trust, Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust, um, the Mass Audubon, and some other. Oh, Mill City Grows. They are trying to turn that into a um, like a wildlife sanctuary with trails um, and what? some education on site. So really, really, really cool, uh, exciting projects that we would not see happen without that source of funding. So I'm really excited to kind of watch it all play out. And I'm sure you'll be hearing more about it. And, and, I, and I did, Fran, receive an email because it is exciting. Uh, Rolly's Farm, just if I can elaborate, right? Protect Rolly's Farm, talk about create an urban wildlife sanctuary education center dedicated to local agriculture and community-based environmental education. I mean, that's just, well, how wonderful would that be if that could oh, really, be selected? Huh? Right. So just kind of exciting yeah. stuff. Very exciting. So that's it from the from okay, city's perspective. You. We have no further um, matters before the board to entertain a motion to adjourn. Well moved. Motion is made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 We have adjourned. Good night and thank you very much, everybody.